Welcome, and thanks for taking a tour of ArcSurf Unified Data Protection version 6, a solution that combines industry proven backup, replication, high availability, and true global deduplication technology into one unified solution. With version 6, we have improved product unification, added additional fast, flexible recovery options, and key management features. The ArcServe UDP solution provides an all-inclusive solution for next-generation storage problems of organizations that are trying to protect their data in a rapidly changing virtual, cloud, and services world. The solution does this by providing a single user interface to a wide range of functionality addressing multi-site business continuity and disaster preparedness problems. We've added several new features and functionalities in this release. ArcServe UDP now lets you download a small web downloader, a unified installer, to help you decide and download the required components based on your selection. Using the unified installer, you can install all features of the selected components, either in express mode or in advanced mode. The configuration wizard provides an easy workflow to set up ArcServe UDP. Using this wizard, you can create a plan to protect different kinds of servers, including physical and virtual machines, Windows and Linux machines. With Instant Virtual Machine, ArcServe UDP lets you create a virtual machine instantly from a recovery point. The advantage of an Instant Virtual Machine is that it provides an immediate access to data and applications present in the ArcServe UDP backup sessions. An Instant Virtual Machine eliminates the downtime associated with a traditional restore or conversion of the backup session to a physical or virtual machine. Apart from the software snapshots, ArcServe UDP lets you create hardware snapshots for generating your backup sessions. You can enable hardware snapshots for VMware virtual machine and physical machine backups. For Hyper-V servers, ArcServe UDP provides transportable snapshot backup. For VMware, iSCSI and NFS are supported. ArcServe UDP supports submitting backup and restore jobs from the command line. Role-based administration allows users to use the UDP console by different roles. Each role can have its own permission. A super administrator role can create customized roles and permissions. ArcServe UDP enhances the protection of servers that are behind NAT firewall and run the console in public cloud. The console uses the gateway to communicate with servers that are in a client network. There are many more new functionalities added to ArcServe UDP including on-demand replication, on-demand merge, on-demand file copy, on-demand file archiving, the new ArcServe UDP Exchange granular restore utility, granular restore for SharePoint, copy to tape, and automatically collecting diagnostic information. Then we have all the feature enhancements, from fully qualified domain name support, not requiring a reboot for Windows agents, to optional session passwords and backup plans. In this video, we'll be covering the install and basic configuration of UDP. Starting with setup and deployment, the new unified product installer provides new customers a streamlined, simple download experience, combining UDP, RHA, and ASBU into flexible single download installation and setup. Users now have the option to participate in ArcServe's product improvement programs, shaping the future versions of ArcServe products. ArcServe will unobtrusively collect product-specific usage statistics to better understand customer needs. This is an optional program, and customers can opt out of the program after joining. Let's take a look at the installation wizard. We'll go through and select Next. It will check to see whether or not ArcServe is installed. We'll select Next, and then we will choose which products we wish to download and install. In our case, we will be using ArcServe Unified Data Protection. We have the option to also download ArcServe Backup and ArcServe High Availability. It also provides the links for the ArcServe UDP Linux Backup Server and ArcServe UDP Linux Restore Utility. We will choose our download destination. Select to download, and it will go ahead and download the UDP product. Now that the download is completed, we'll go ahead and select Next. Choose to do an express installation or an advanced installation. Let's go ahead and look at an advanced installation. 
We downloaded only ArcServe Unified Data Protection, so we will go ahead and install that product. Accepting the end user license agreement, we can do a full installation of the UDP console, recovery point server, and agent, or just an installation of the agent itself. Let's take a look at the advanced installation. In our case, what we will be deploying is the agent and the console. I will later deploy the recovery point server on a separate server. Also, we will install the ArcServe UDP change tracking driver as well. Let's select Next. We will go with the default installation location. Select Next. Choose our communication protocol. Let's use HTTPS. Give our credentials. And let's display ArcServe UDP Agent Monitor for all users. Selecting Next. SQL Express will also be installed, and we will go with the default locations for that. Select Next. Firewall Exceptions is a notification to let you know what services and programs will be registered with the Windows Firewall. We'll select Next and choose to install. Now that our installation is complete, we can go ahead and check for updates immediately. We'll go ahead and finish. Choose whether or not we wish to download from an ArcServe server or from a staging server or through a proxy server. We'll select Update. Our version will be up to date and we can select Finish. We'll select Finish again and ArcServe UDP is installed. Now that we have UDP installed, let's start protecting our environment. We will begin by logging into the console with our administrative information. New configuration wizards have been added to the UDP console and recovery point server. The previous setup and configuration of a basic RPS with a single data store was reasonably complicated for new users, so this usability enhancement should greatly improve customer experience. The configuration wizard will take us through steps, creating our protection plan, adding nodes to protect, selecting our destination, and scheduling our first backups. Let's go ahead and begin. We will first name our protection plan. And let's start out by backing up the console itself. This will be an agent based Windows, although we could do agentless or agent based Linux as well. We will select Next. We will choose our host name. We could also choose this through Active Directory as well. We will provide our credentials. And give it a short description. Add it to the list. And select next. Our options for the backup would be to backup to a data store on a recovery point server or a network share or on a protected node. In our case, we'll backup to a recovery point server. Now we have not installed our recovery point server, so this gives us the option to go ahead and add the recovery point server now. We'll identify the node name or IP address of the server we wish to deploy the recovery point server software out to, our credentials, and a brief description. We can also specify our install location and our port. We will stick with the HTTPS protocol. We will also install the change tracking driver. We will select Next.
and it will install the recovery point server software onto the remote server. Now that we have our recovery point server deployed, we need to finish configuring it. Let's select OK. We will be backing up to a data store on that recovery point server, which we have not created yet. So let's go ahead and create that. Let's give the data store a name. Let's define our data store folder location by browsing to some storage that the server can see. In this case, it'll be another drive on the machine. It could be a NAS, direct attached storage, or SAN location as well. Let's go ahead and name the folder. And select OK. The other data store configuration options are how many concurrent nodes can access the data store at once. Do we wish to enable deduplication? With deduplication, we will choose the block size, which can be 4K, 8K, 16, and 32K. Smaller block sizes will give overall better deduplication results in most cases. Let's stick with the default 16K deduplication block size. How much memory do we wish to allocate to deduplication? We can also offload the hash process to an SSD drive, which will reduce the memory requirements for deduplication. We will define a destination for the data, the index, and the hash file when using deduplication. Let's go ahead and do that now. Best practices are that these will be separate locations, separate drives. We can combine the data and the index onto the same drive, but always the hash should be its own drive to allow for the high IOPS of the hash process. For our demo purposes, everything on one drive is fine. Do we wish to enable compression? And do we wish to enable encryption? If we're enabling encryption, we'll provide our encryption key. Let's go ahead and select Next. We then can enable a session password for the protection plan as well as an additional level of security. Let's select Next. We will set our backup schedule, which will be the agent installation, the first backup, and subsequent daily backups. It will default to an infinite incremental daily backup which we can later change. Now we'll select Next. We can then create additional backup plans as well. Let's create those additional plans outside of the configuration wizard so that you're familiar with how to do that. Let's select Next. Our next steps are adding more nodes to protect, customizing plans with features such as virtual standby, file copy, replication, and adding more destinations, additional recovery point servers, data stores, etc. We will go ahead and finish. And now the console is ready to deploy the agent as scheduled. For more detailed information, please review the content on arcserve.com or you can contact and chat with an ArcServe sales representative. Thank you.